have a panel now in which we're going to talk about talent, um, the war for talent, the, the scramble to find tech talent, and what can we do to make this easier? This is a theme, I feel, that has been very apparent here at Slush. Everybody's talking about how difficult it is to hire. Um, and we've talked about lots of different ways of doing that, but I think we're going to kind of de dive deeper into that now. Um, so thanks, everyone, for, uh, for joining the panel. Um, and we will get to the uh, uh, question of whether stock options but are one of the answers. But I'd like to start really with a general question, really, to, to Johannes and, and Tarvet, because you, you're both running uh, tech companies that are scaling fast. Uh, you're hiring a lot of people. So how many positions do you have open at the moment? I mean, what are, you, are you finding all the people that you need? Can you put the problem sort of into, uh, <laughs> into perspective for us? I think you know, hiring is something that you always think about, right? You always, you always are hiring. And we, you know, we're, we're a smaller company in terms of employees than, than, than you are, but we have been growing rather quickly. We are now a team of around 200 people in Stockholm. We were 20 people uh, a year and a half ago. And we also employ a lot of clinicians. So we have more than 400 clinicians employed. And of course, as, as CEO of a fast growing company, uh, hiring great talent is something that's always on your mind, right? And what do you find hardest to hire for? Is it software developers? Is it other positions? I mean, what's the most difficult t think, skill you know, it, to find? It is always hard to find great talent. I think we have been in a good position where we have, uh, have not been have so much trouble to attract great talent. And I think that's one of you know, the reasons why we are attracting a lot of great talent is also that we are a very mission-driven company. Um, but of course, there's, there's a talent war all across Europe. Um, but we, no. Both of our companies, we are attracting a lot of great talent. And Tavit, what about um, what about you? How many how many open positions at TransferWise right now? We're a team of 1,300 globally. Uh, we have 10 offices, and we have uh, more than 100 openings right now. So more than 100 yeah, open. I wouldn't be surprised if we hire a thousand people next year or so. And definitely, you know, every every fast-growing company thrives on talent. You know, access to talent is the most important thing. And it, in my experience, it doesn't even matter that much whether we're hiring in New York, London, or Singapore. It's hard everywhere. The issues are slightly, uh, issues are slightly different in different places. But, uh, but in the end, it's about building a machine that can do the hiring for you. That's the only way you can succeed in the long term. OK. So is I think there maybe a just, just to, I think to give yeah. you a sense for the, the size of the task at hand, we looked at uh, job postings on VentureLoop and on AngelList for uh, European vc back companies. And we estimate that for next year, the number of uh, hires to be made is about 100,000 across Europe, across these companies. So that's, that's the scale of the task ahead for, for so, European startups. So 100,000 positions are yeah. going to be, need to be filled. And are we confident that we have enough people to, to fill them? I mean, where, where are they going to come from? Are the universities producing this number of people? Yeah, I think, I think the talent is definitely there in, in Europe. Uh, I mean, obviously, you know, the you know, education system is, is very strong. Um, but what we've, been, what we've been campaigning for at Index is um, for companies to be in a stronger position to attract these people. And, 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 and to us, you know, there are two ingredients to make great startups, uh, to fuel the growth of startups. One is capital, and that was the topic for the past 25 years in Europe when we started with Index. And we feel that's been... That's been mostly solved. When you see you know, the number of scooter startups being funded, clearly there is capital in Europe. Uh, so that's not really a topic anymore. Um, but the other one that's even more important to us is the talent. And, and you know, if you're a startup, you have only really one way to compete against more established, profitable company. You, know, you can't align yourself on salaries because you're not profitable uh, and your runway is limited. And the, other, the, the only way you can compete and attract good talent is by you know, giving them options. And where Europe is, is falling short in many places across Europe is on the option, uh, on the option side. So we've, we've published this, this report, which is the second edition, updated version, uh, which explains a lot about how to set up your option plans across Europe. So giving data and making sure that it is comparable and that we'll know how much to grain to who in what situation. But we've gone one step further this year. And we've also launched a campaign uh, to policymakers uh, called Not Optional, and I think we're going to have a ranking of, of countries across Europe uh, on screen. And, and, and the idea is to uh, push uh, policymakers to make it easier for startups 
to grant options to their employees so that startups can compete with the Google and the Facebook and the banks and the consulting firms of this world to attract this talent that does exist, but today doesn't necessarily have the incentive to join these startups at the very early stage. Getting lower salary, they need to get better reward and upside if the, if the startup is successful. And, and just to kind of recap the problem, so, you know, yes, at the moment, US companies can find it a lot easier to give their, their employees stock options, and we don't really have that as a tool in Europe, um, partly because the regimes are different all over the, in, in every country as well. Yeah, so I think, uh, so we did this research last year, and at exit, um, employees in the US tend to have about 20% ownership of the company. In Europe, it's 10%, so it's half. And the other thing is, two thirds of these options in Europe go to the senior managers versus one third for more junior employees. It's the opposite in, in the US. So as a junior employee in, in Europe, you get you know, a fourth or less than you know, that you would get in the US. So obviously, if you, you know, if you, you know, the, the incentive is just not, not, not as strong as it would be in the Valley. Uh, and some countries have really good option schemes. I mean, you see, I mean, there was, there was the, the ranking, you know, Estonia is exceptional, UK is very strong, France has some good, some good, good scheme, but some countries are, 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 are very low on that, on that scale, you know, Belgium, Germany, Spain, for example, you know, are, 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 are very poor. Um, so what we're trying to do is at least start with getting all the countries to a high level. So let's say to the, you know, the UK level, I think it's a good benchmark. And then the next step, which will be harder, will be to try to harmonize things across Europe. Because today, not only some countries are really poor, but as you said, you know, it, the schemes are different in every, in, in every country. And like France, for example, is very good for French uh, companies with French employees, but not really good if you're a, a foreign company wanting to you know, open a subsidiary in France. So those are the two dimensions to take into account. But let, let's turn this to Tavit and, and Johannes uh, for a moment. I mean, is a, a stock option something that your employees are, are asking you for? I mean, Tavit, I think you had some experience where people were able to realize their stock options for the first time last year. So, I mean, definitely it's, it's a thing where cultural Europe is, is behind the US. But, you know, maybe taking a step back, so... I was part of the team that built Skype, and I had stock options in Skype, and you know, Skype did well, so I was pretty lucky to, uh, to benefit from that. So to me, it was very much a no-brainer that everybody at TransferWise should have stock options. Eh? So we started giving them out to every employee since the beginning, and uh, you know, it's, for us, it's always felt, felt important. Eh? I do think that you have to think of, like, more holistically about what is your kind of talent proposition. You know, stock options is one thing, you know, kind of what kind of work they do. There are many things which actually make a company attractive. But, uh, but back on stock options, uh, so we've been doing it since the beginning. But I've always had this nagging feeling that, you know, however much we explain to people how they work, it's still, you know, some people believe in it, some people don't. But I mean, the other thing about options is like, you know, you have to turn them into money eventually. And, you know, given that companies take longer to go public and so on, that becomes, you know, an issue on its own. So last year where we had our last fundraise, we actually allowed certain people to exercise their options. So people who've been with us for more than, more than a couple of years were able to sell a share of their options. And it actually had a really positive impact because even the people who previously didn't quite value them so that actually this is something real. So that's, I think, really, really good. And I think as a kind of ecosystem, we should think about how do we, how do we make these things more common and how do we create the culture where these things can happen more, more frequently without companies needing to be public. And, you know, legally, this whole thing is a, is a minefield and, you know, it's hard to, hard to give options in Europe, in different countries, but then if you're doing it globally, you know, it's, it's even more of a puzzle. Mm. And, you know, unfortunately, way too, way too much money goes to lawyers for figuring it out. But you, you're, you're lucky in the sense that you're in, in Estonia, UK, and some of these regimes where it's actually relatively easy to do this. Um, again, if you were going into, say, you know, Germany or, or, or speaking to, you know, thinking about doing something in Spain, I mean, again, how much of a, a, a sort of hindrance do you think that would, would, would be for you? To be honest, we, like, when we open a new office, I'm sure we look at it, but it's not the major criteria. You know, probably as a result, what can happen is that, you know, certain people might just suffer a little bit more if the tax regime in Spain is really bad, then, you know, I actually don't even know if it would give them more options or they would just be able to realize less and we'd say, hey, you have to go and campaign with your government to fix your tax, tax laws. 
And, and Johannes, uh, is uh, are stock options something that you're talking to your employees about? Is there a, you know, interest in this? And in, in Sweden as yeah. well, the law is, is changing and evolving on this. So. Also, since the ecosystem is, keeps on evolving, uh, I think people are now trying to understand what stock option is. And uh, yeah, of course, and we have the, it's a, I would say it is a disadvantage of being a European company since we have to have set up different schemes in different markets and high complexity and in many markets as you know, we know it's not, it's not super favorable for, for the employees and for us. Um, but yes, we, we, and we, are, we are currently now looking into how to, to do this since we're now, now growing and setting up local entities and local offices in many European markets. And I understand that Sweden is in this kind of halfway house where it is, it's easy to give stock options up to a certain size and then it becomes much more difficult. So again, it's, I think one of the problems, and Martin, maybe you can speak to this, I, it, it feels like it's a sort of harmonization problem in Europe, which is, we quite often have harmonization problems in Europe in all sorts of yeah, things. Um, stock options is, is, is one of them. But now. isn't it both? Like you have it's markets both, yeah. where it's, like, it's, it's really, really bad. And Sweden has been one of those markets up until recently where there's now some initiatives in place. And that's, you know, up until 50 employees, you know, it's fairly easy to do it. And, you know, we were far from that number when that was implemented. So it's no, for us, it's, it's no It benefit. didn't help you yeah. at all. And then you have the harmonization problem. Like you have a lot, of, uh, a lot of companies with an European ambition and going after many European markets. So it's both of those, those problems. And, you know, in many of those markets, like it is, you, you could solve it, but it's, highly complex, it's a lot of legal effort and a lot of complexity. And if we were a, uh, a US company, that would have been easy. So of course, it's a disadvantage. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I think and it's both yeah, on harmonization and it's a cultural issue. And I think we need to tackle both of them. Like the technicalities of how to do it, you know, it needs to become easier and hopefully over time it will. But I think the other one is a cultural one. And I think for a cultural one, actually having success stories is going to be the best things that help. So you know, I'm sure that in Sweden, so there were quite a few people who were uh, who benefited from Spotify. You know, TransferWise. You know, all the other European, uh, you know, iconic high-growth companies. You know, so they will create people who have uh, who 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 create some wealth as a result of it, uh, which I think will will force a cultural change to happen. Like you know, if I look at what happened in Skype, and you know, Skype was 10 years ago, and I'd say you know, the amount of op options given at Skype was tiny. It was by far not 10%, but you know, the, the impact that had on Estonia was huge. You know? The amount of uh, money that Estonia made and which went, went back into the ecosystem. And as a result, everybody in Estonia is going to ask for stock options now. You know, that might not be the case in Lithuania or some other country where the ecosystem isn't that mature yet. Yeah, it, it's really amazing actually to see what the Skype alumni sort of did l l later on. And I think that's the the ecosystem effect that we kind I of want yeah, I to see. I think there are, there are two things. I mean, one, I mean, there has been you know, surveys showing that uh, companies with high employership are faster growing, more profitable, and create more jobs. So there is a, you know, it's a win-win for, obviously, the employer who can attract more, more talent. It's obviously a win for the employee who can you know, get participate into the upside. And it's also a win for, for the country. So that, that's why, that's why we're, we're pushing hard. And I think to the, you know, to the harmonization point, I think th these, these are national government policies. It's not an EU-level policy. So the harmonization is going to be further down in the future. I think there is, you really need to understand that there is a real pain point for a lot of countries across Europe. You know, take, take Belgium, for example, where you know, it's a place where basically you get, you know, so it's not only about the, tech, the tax rate. It's about you know, even the, the tax timing. So in, in Belgium, you get taxed on the stock option the day you receive, you get granted options for something that in 90% of cases will be worth nothing. So you pay taxes up front for something that in 90% of cases will have no value. And then if it ever gets successful, you don't even get taxed anymore. So obviously, when it gets successful, people are like, these people are not paying taxes. It's such a shame what is happening. So, you know, it just, so the result is that it is unfair. Employees don't want stock options in, in Belgium because it's just, you know, they, need, they don't have the cash and they don't necessarily want to take the risk. And it's just, it's just totally counterproductive. Um, so, you know, you really, you know, you, you do have, before even harmonizing, you have a lot of countries that need to really step up their game. And some large ones, like Germany, you know, mm. are included in, the, in, that, in that bucket. Uh, it's not, again, it's not only about, you know, we're not pushing for a flat you know, tax rate or a low tax rate. It's not a question of, you tax whatever you want. It's, also, it's a question of admin, making it easy to do and manageable. One issue is voting rights. So, you know, for example, in, in Germany, you know, you, you, 
you know, every, you know, you can't have different class of shares, so every share has voting rights, which means that once your employee, if you have 1,000 employees with options and they exercise their option, you got 1,000 people to vote on every decision. Mm -hmm. So you need to go and collect physical signature for 1,000, so it just doesn't work. Um, so there's the admin part, and then there is the tax. It's not even the tax rate, it's about when you tax. Uh, you know, if you tax people before they've received any cash, that, that's never going to work, right? So I think that those are the two things we're pushing for. And just to give you a sense for why it's real, it's like the campaign, we launched it with 30 people who signed. So, you know, Tavet Johannes did sign the letter when we published it. Today we have 500, of, and, and you, you, you name it, any of the top CEOs in Europe is a signatory, and top VC is a signatory to that campaign. So I think, you know, the, the pledge and what we want from this, you know, to keep from this panel is really to say, police, you know, policymakers, this is a real issue. There has been value being created. People want to redistribute it and be able to compete and build the next you know, $100 billion company from, from Europe. Yeah, and just for anybody in the audience who's interested, you can sign up to Not Optional. So if you uh, check out the hat, hashtag or notoptional.eu. Um, I, th I think it's remarkable, actually, that you, you went in a week. You, you, had, you started with 30 signatures, and now it's gone to 500. So, yeah. I mean, to me, that feels like it is a real indication that this is a, a, a common pain point for, for, for a lot of companies. Um, doesn't even have to be, I mean, it's, it's nice that we have some of the biggest company names on there, but there, it doesn't have to necessarily be a big company. Um, I mean, th it's too early yet to have feedback from the regulators, but my understanding is that this isn't necessarily one of these issues that would become a big battleground. I mean, it doesn't have a, an enormous implication in terms of um, government revenues or anything. I mean, it, it, it's more of a, it, it's an administrative change that could be made relatively easily if there was a will to do it. it, it it's high impact and it's fairly, you know, and it's, it's, it's fairly low difficulty. Uh, right. It's more of a question of education. Again, it is something, until you had seen the TransferWise, the Spotify, the Alien, it wasn't really an issue because employees and policymakers don't really realize that the value and, 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 and the strengths of, of options to attract talent and then create an ecosystem. But now that it, you know, it is, you know, value has been created and people have started to notice. And so I totally agree. I think, as I said, I think it is a win-win-win. So it should be you know, feasible to push for it. But you need to educate and you need you know, to explain why it is so important and why this is the single most you know, potentially most powerful lever to really build these very large European companies. What's it's, interesting also, but, sorry, I'm just going to say that even the EU's own research, though, indicates that when employees you know, employee ownership of the company has all kinds of uh, beneficial effects. So let's even take it out of the tech realm yeah. and the startup world for a moment, but just, you know, com employee ownership of companies is generally proven to be beneficial in terms of productivity, in terms of returns and all sorts of things. So it, you would imagine that, you know, we'd want to do something to, to encourage that. And I, I think in countries where the government is listening to the tech sector is actually pretty simple. You know, in, in Estonia, the prime minister hosts regular roundtables with the ecosystem and, you know, these issues bubble up naturally and it's actually a great way for the governments to show that they care about it. So it is relatively simple. You know, the tax authorities typically don't have anything against it, you know. It does take processing to go through it, but it starts with having the will to do it and, and having the government listen to the tech sector. And if that's the case, then it's easy. Johannes, are you talking to the Swedish uh, authorities about the tax issue at all, or? Yeah, we are. Yeah, yeah. And I think there's a, there's a willingness to, to 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 change this. I think, as you said, it's a matter of like understanding the benefits of, of doing this, and it's it's you know, as the name of the campaign, it's 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 not optional. Like we are, are we competing to be talent on a global scale, and as you said, in order to achieve that, we could you know, build great companies from and huge companies from Europe. We need to just fix this. And it is fixable in all markets. It just needs to be done. And uh, similarly, in, in UK, when, when there was a prime minister who was uh, dealing with the country, so, you know, there were regular discussions, and uh, these things uh, came up. So which country do you think, um, Martin, should it be modeled on, do you think? Is there, I mean, is Estonia the, the example that we could follow? I think UK is probably the more, you know, Estonia is so, uh, so unique and, uh, and, and, and so ahead, I think, it, uh, you know, for, and for larger countries, it's going to be difficult. There's a flat, you know, flat tax rate, very low tax rate, for example, which, which wouldn't probably suit, you know, Germany or, or you know, or even France. Uh, I think the UK is a good, is a really good model, um, and I think it's a good, good, good target to to hit. If everyone, if everyone could just copy that, I think Europe would be in a much, much better position. And then we could 
if you could make it passportable, so you know you can use the same option plan across Europe. That would be even better, but let's let's start with you know kind of moving everyone. And I think you know, Sweden has you know the, the has launched a new pilot kind of program, which is very similar to the UK, just with a lower threshold. Um, the only thing I guess about the UK is that the threshold is is, is you know was great when companies were smaller. Mm -hmm. I think now we're seeing companies like TransferWise and like a few other are growing really fast to fairly large number, uh, and the threshold is a, is a bit too low. So it would make sense to make it a little bit bigger. Uh, but we don't want to make it too big either because you don't want to have uh, larger corporates benefiting from it. It has to be something that's very well suited and focused on the earlier and, and the younger and the smaller companies. Otherwise, it just you know, defeats the purpose. I actually, I would disagree. I don't see why it should be special for startups. And in UK, the so UK EMI scheme is, is really good. Mm -hmm. The trouble is it caps out the 250 employees, which we hit pretty quickly. And, and even then, it could be made simpler. Like. It should be like by default. There's no need to apply anything, uh, anything special. Mm, it just feel like, but I guess the argument would be that once you have a scheme, then it's easier to to sort of move the cap exactly. upwards than to, to to come up with with new regulation. But I, again, are you? But do you think there is some resistance to kind of taking it to, to bigger companies? Do you think that people are are worried that then it would would be unsuitable companies or companies that they didn't have in mind taking advantage of, of the tax. I actually, I actually I think, haven't I, heard of it. I think the, if you talk to policymakers, uh, some of them will be worried that, that there will be some excesses and, you know, because stock, like, like say France, for example, stock options have a bit of a bad rep because they've been used for uh, law, you know, executives, top executives of, of large companies that, and it has made, you know, maybe too generous in some cases. And so because of that, I think there is some suspicion. So that, that's why limiting it to a certain size makes it, it, makes it much more of a no-brainer. If you start pushing for every, every company, then you get into this, you know, why is Total benefiting from this? You know, you start getting into these arguments, which is definitely not what we're, you know, we become way too political. We're not here, you know, it's not a political campaign. It's just, it's, we, we believe it's a win-win-win, and it should be a kind of a no-brainer to kind of to pa to pass that. And, and having some form of threshold makes it just, just much easier. So, but David, so did you, um, in, in terms of, you know, the, we'll come back to this question of when you, when, pe when you see people realize their stock options, I mean, what did, you know, what did employees typically then do with that? Did they, uh, you know, I mean, did they, did it increase their motivation? Did they kind of invest it in something else? What have they done? Crazy binge drinking and <laughs> buying Ferraris. Eh? <laughs> um, you know, I think we have uh, pretty sensible people, so. Uh, I don't think anything, anything ridiculous happened. Like, did, it, did it increase uh, motivation? Maybe for a moment. You know, I think you know, there's plenty of research actually saying that you know, increasing someone's pay has a very short-term impact. So, but I think it's just uh, it's the biggest impact is it made it real. So we've always spoken to people, hey, we don't have bonuses. You know, mm -hmm. We have uh, a simple salary. And then you have options. And I think you know, people have been discounting the options. Uh, to a degree, and I think now it just actually makes it a kind of like a full, like a real citizen. So it just makes it real, which I think is really, really important. Just to give a sense for the, the impact it can have. So in France, you had Criteo going public, and overnight you have 50 people becoming millionaires. And most of them today are some of the largest and most active angel investors in France and or have restarted you know, other company of their own. Um, and that, that's how you, you, know, that, that's how you, kind of, you, you, get, you get started. Yeah, I guess that's the, this is the ecosystem problem. And I think it's quite yeah. interesting because every city that you go to now is very interested in creating a, a tech ecosystem. And there's, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're giving spaces, you know, facilities. They're trying to um, make sure that they have things like, you know, fast internet and, uh, and, 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 and trendy restaurants and all this kind of stuff. But actually, maybe they're not thinking about well, what, they, what, could, what they could do on the, on the back end is just make it easier for people to realize some of the gains from these companies. You know, I was just doing a back of a napkin calculation. There are employees own hundreds of millions of dollars worth of transferwise stock. So this will, you know, a lot of it will get invested back in the startup ecosystem eventually. And you know, this number over time will become bigger and bigger. So it's pretty significant. Eh? But I think that's, that, of course, is great when it's a big exit that you have the new generation of angels and so on. But also, you know, if we look back in our history, like early on, when you, don't, you can't afford big salaries, people join and they take a big, big risk. They do big pay cuts and so on. And it's just fair that they could, you know, that we can provide them with some extra yeah. option skin. Yeah, I, I'm always I'm quite intrigued by the salary levels. I mean, that's always something that's interesting in the uh, State of European Tech Report is when you see that actually 
uh, you, you know, the big American companies, the ones who've been established, they obviously, they have much higher profitability and, uh, and all this. They, they, you know, they can pretty much outbid in terms of a base salary level always. Oh. So, you know, this is so, the daily battle for you guys. Yeah, I mean, the only way you compete with that is and is with a very exciting options package. Yeah? But even, you know, not competing with a Facebook, so you're hiring someone and, you know, it's very, it's, it's very typical that somebody used to earn 100,000 pounds and they'll come to a startup and they'll get 60. Mm -hmm. And you know, it, it's, a, it's not a trivial choice to make for anyone. And the only, way, it's the only, only thing you can apply is, uh, well, the stock option is one thing, and you know, hopefully, hopefully you can talk about the more meaningful work you're doing and the better environment and so on. But you know, the options yeah. part, I feel it, it needs to be there as well. And do you think it's not a, it's only, I think it's not only about, about the tech sector. You know, you're not only competing against Facebook and Google. Look at you know, Tavet. He's hiring people from the financial you know, service industry. No. And, well, you know, <laughs> some of them. And you know, you, those people are going to get paid you know, 200, 300, 400, 500 K in London easily. Yeah, and they will and, get a bonus every bonus, year too. Exactly. I mean, how do you, as a startup, how do you, you can't, you know, you know yeah. even the CEO, you know, the CEO doesn't get paid anywhere near that, you know, so just, that just, that, that, that just you can't and compete against that. No, and, and, and you I need guess to attract this talent from, you know, not only from Google and Facebook, also from these places. Yeah, and you're also potentially competing not just with someone deciding to work for you or company A, B or C, but also that they could do their own thing. I mean, if, you know, we were just hearing earlier today, it's never been easier to set up your own startup then you would own it. So then the, the choice becomes, you know, do I, do I go to work for someone else and I don't even get a, a, you know, a, a stock option or a share yeah, of ownership you, in this company. You come work for us for four years and then you go start your own company. That's yeah. a sales pitch. <laughs> really? I mean, we've, we have, we have, we've had a number of people uh, who were with us early go and start their own company and I think that's super exciting, you know. And I'm, I'm hoping for a transferwise mafia which will beat the hell out of all the previous mafias. Eh? <laughs> So is that, uh, Johannes, do you, when people come to work for you and you try to convince them to take this pay cut, is it like, come here, learn how to do a startup, and then you expect maybe they go off to do their own company? Well, for us, I hope that people don't join because of the opposite schemes. That's, that's like, it's, it's, I would not put that on top of the, uh, yeah. why people, I, that's, that's why people should not beca join because of that. But it's, uh, it's, it's great if we can have a, a, a good opposite scheme and people could actually uh, create some wealth. Yeah. Well, I think we're out of time, but I, I, I mean, I think it's, a, it's, a, it's going to be a live issue and it's something that, um, you know, at Sifted, which is this new media platform that we're, we're focusing on European tech, I mean, I think it's one of those issues that we want to keep following um, because I think it cuts across Europe, it cuts across all tech companies and everybody is going to have to take a, a, a view on this and maybe, you know, hopefully we'll get some sort of feedback soon from, from regulators in terms of whether they're willing to... Yeah, absolutely. So you can, again, you know, you can go sign on notoptional.eu and we are sending the letter with all the signatures uh, to the policymakers in early January, uh, all the local ones and, and the commission in, in, in the EU as well. Um, but this is a local affair. So go sign, pledge if you are a CEO or an investor, because I think with, with, the, with the momentum there is behind it, change, change will, come, will come next year. Yeah, we'll keep, keep, you know, we'll keep you posted, watch this space, but I mean, certainly you know, once the letter's out and, uh, and we start to get some feedback back, yeah. that will be a story to follow. So thanks very much for putting, you know, shedding some light on that and Great. good luck with all the hiring. You have your work <laughs> cut out. Thanks a lot. Thank thanks. you. Thanks.